You're getting used to me sitting here, aren't you? Well, we're talking about sheep. Even the little story before was about sheep. Let's see what more we can find out about them. Sheep in Australia, somehow or another, are branded to the person or farm, farm? Where, where they belong, where they're owned. Likewise, sometimes in the past, most of us were carried to a font, something like, uh, where is it? Over there. Over there, I can't see it, like that one behind me. And we were baptized. Now, it might have been a font, it might have been a swimming pool, it might have been a river. But we were baptised in the name of the Trinity. Water was poured or sprinkled over us, or perhaps we were even completely dunked. And in the process, we were welcomed into the body of Christ, the church, or in the context of today's gospel, into the flock. The priest or pastor would have marked us with the sign of the cross, right up here, using water or oil, and in spiritual terms, at that point, we were branded too, branded as belonging to the flock of Christ, the body of Christ, the church. Now, within minutes, the wet cross either dried off or was gently wiped off to avoid stinging little baby eyes, and no one would have been able to look at us and actually see the brand mark. But it was still there, and it is still there. The Lord can see it. And that's all that matters. He knows us by name. In the Gospel today, Jesus is spoken of as being the Good Shepherd. And we learn something about Jesus and about ourselves from the image that St. John gives us. A shepherd is to his sheep as Jesus is to us, his flock, his family. But there are some important points we need to grab hold of here. Firstly, the sheep have to trust the shepherd to lead them to places of good grass and clean water. And that is that trust is built up over a period of time. The shepherd needs to know the territory, the surrounding area, and the current conditions. And he usually acquires this knowledge from years of experience and learning, and he obviously needs to know the silly little quirks that each individual sheep might have. Obviously, the sheep will not keep following a shepherd who repeatedly leads his sheep to dry or sparse grassland or to foul water. Then, as we just heard, the sheep know to know they look, the voice and the ways of the trusted shepherd so that they will not repeat, will not follow an imposter. I think I can safely state that... <clears throat> Sheep do not appear to be the easiest of God's creatures to lead to anything, be it good feed or living water, and that's why we have got sheep dogs, have we not? God's sheep that have two legs can be sometimes as obstinate as the ones that got four. Now, I no doubt Father Steve is eternally grateful that nobody here falls into that obstinate character category. Why are you laughing at that? Neither do sheep seem to be good at recognising danger. Even when it's staring them right in the face, they need a good, firm, knowledgeable leader. It's no wonder that in John's Gospel, 
we hear Jesus saying that he, he and only he, is the good shepherd who really knows and cares for us, his sheep. Not like a hired man who doesn't really give two hoots because the sheep need constant attention. In Jesus' day, there are many examples of counterfeit shepherds, many priests, scribes, cared more about their power and their pockets than their people. Jesus called them, what? Hypocrites and snakes in the grass. Isn't that true? And probably worse, but they didn't record it in the scriptures. There are still no shortages of counterfeit spiritual shepherds. I won't rattle off the names and deeds of some of the more well-known ones over the years. I've done that before in this place, I think. But only this week we've heard of a so-called pastor in Kenya who told his flock that if they starved themselves to death, what would happen? They would go straight to heaven. Now you have to wonder why people would believe such things but maybe if life is absolutely destitute and desperate and there's no future and there's nothing around you but devastation it might actually sound relatively appealing and people will always take advantage of those sorts of things last thing I heard there were hundreds of bodies being exhumed in Kenya, I guess it's going to be more. Then I saw him being carted away in the back of a Range Rover or a Land Rover and he was smiling and waving to everybody. And I thought, I don't believe this. And they were waving back. False shepherds, counterfeit shepherds. No doubt, of course, before they starved themselves, they were encouraged to place any money and possessions into the pastor's hands, but that's another story. Whenever we get a new set of yellow pages, you know that directory that be going around lately, did you get one? Not yet, no. Gimpy must be first. <coughs> now I have a quick glance at the list of churches and mosques and temples. And I'm not going to mention any by name, but some of them sound a tad sus to me. And often the longer the name, the more sus I get, the more I worry. Some counterfeit shepherds come knocking at our doors and they present a darn good story. And they hit upon world events. And they use fear, if you like, of the unknown to bring people to them who think that they've got the answers and they haven't. All they've got is a false gospel, a false teaching. And at the very least, they're misguided people. At worst, they're deliberately working for the evil one. Maybe though, they don't even know. They just think they've got to work their way somehow to heaven. Genuine Christian pastors, without exception, warn about these wolves in sheep's clothing, yet each year individuals are tricked into entering these false flocks, these false enclosures. And what happens once they get in there? They don't get out again. They don't easily get out again at all. If somebody doesn't like my preaching or Father Steve's preaching, you can walk out the door, can you not? <laughs> You're always such a good help, bro. <laughs> but you can't do that at some of these places. They would try everything to stop you from doing it because they just want to hang on to you. It's so sad, isn't it? They're false sheep pens, but people get firmly locked in and they soon discover what I said before, they are not free to come and go at all. 
Now, I praise God that everybody here, I'm sure, is fed spiritual food that is right and proper in this place. You are faithfully led to streams of living water. You hear the true gospel preached. Is that not true? And who's the guy who does it most of the time? Father Steve. But seriously, if it ever did happen, how would you recognise false teaching? Any thoughts? Go back and check the Bible. If someone is telling you something, you haven't uh, com committed yourself to the Lord fully enough to put you there and see. And that happened to me once, and it was from one of those. Mm -hmm. and, and I found the Bible. Well, that's what I'll say Paul over here. Mm. What else do you think wouldn't be a bad idea to do? Pray. Pray. I think I'd do the, I think I'd do the prayer first and ask for a scripture or something or some leading to what I might look up in the scriptures. Yeah. And one would hope that we would receive somehow the guidance of the Holy Spirit in those matters because usually if we hear something that's wrong and it might be some televangelist or something like that we hear something we think that's a bit sus so what happens something in us reacts yeah our spirit seems to know that this is not right or at least we want to go and check it out so I would put it like this that we need to ask ourselves does it accord with scripture and by that I don't mean some obscure verse quoted out of context because Satan tried that one, remember, was Jesus tempting him to jump off the temple, totally misquoting parts of the scripture. It didn't work because Jesus knew his scriptures well and he threw a couple back. Does my spirit recoil when I hear something that's wrong? Do my discernment bells start ringing with concern? And by that I mean, does it make you feel quite spiritually uncomfortable? Many preachers, including yours truly, often challenge people with the intention of strengthening your faith. Because I don't believe, personally, and patting people on the back every Sunday and saying, aren't you goody little two-shoes, da-da-da-da-da, oh, just keep up what you're doing, da-da-da-da-da, no, you know me well enough to know I've chucked a few challenges out over the years and I think we need to be challenged to be reminded of what we're here for and to have our faith strengthened. When we've heard the word of God in a broad scope of content from sermons and lessons week by week, year by year, surely all these things bring us to the point where we can truly discern and recognize the voice of God or the enemy, the whispering little lies and temptations sown by the deceiver. In other words, by recognizing what is in accordance with the teachings and leadings of the Good Shepherd himself and responding to it with gladness and enthusiasm is where we are, where we should be. I don't know whether any of you heard of that uh, course that's been around for many, many years now. Gosh to my knowledge, since about 1984, which was my first year in ministry, called Christianity Explained. And even though it's as old as the hills, it's as, as effective as you can get because it's grassroots truth. And one of the things it says is about believing, right? Our faith must be based on, yeah, and? Well, yes, facts, facts, not feelings, right? Ah, you see, the facts as contained in the scriptures never change, true? We might muck around with them sadly sometimes, but the scriptures never change. Now, feelings, but, our feelings can be all over the place. Oh, 
one day to the next. We might say that we feel full of doubts today. Oh, I've had a terrible week. I don't think the Lord was anywhere near me during the week. Oh, Lord, I need you. Oh, where were you when I needed you? What's the facts from the Scriptures say? I will be with you always. Not just when you're eating your ice cream and happiest, Larry, when things get tough. I will be with you always. That's the facts. So, folks, if you do have doubts, hands up if you have doubts from time to time. Come on, fess up. Oh. Well, guess what? Join the club. You are not alone. But what we have to do when we get to that point is get back to the scriptures, get back to the facts, and remind yourselves of what <coughs> Jesus said not how you feel. Amen? Amen. Amen.